In part three of our squat rack series, we are going to build these four heights. The first thing I want you to do is start a new sketch on this top face of our left bar. And let's zoom in on the front peg down here at the bottom of our top left bar. Grab our rectangle tool. And I want you to connect your rectangle above our peg on the far left side and then drag across to the far right side below our peg. Right click OK and let's grab our dimension tool. I am going to dimension this top line to the top of our peg. 7 64ths of an inch for the thickness of our frame. And then from the bottom to the bottom edge of our peg the same thing, 7 over 64. And then I'm going to add my fillets, clicking on all four corners of my new rectangle. And let's give that a dimension of 7 over 64 as well. And then hit Finish Sketch. Let's hit Home and zoom in. And I am going to go look at my left base bodies. And let's turn off these bodies that are in my way. And so I want to turn off those two bodies are out of my way. I'm going to hit extrude and I want to select this center rectangle, but then make sure you also grab the fillets on the left and right. So you should have three profiles selected. And then how far up is this going to extrude? Well, if we look at our picture, you can see that the entire height is 86 inches, but that's including this bar up here. And so if we look just at the top of our frame to the bottom of our frame, it's 82 inches. But that's including the two and a half frame on the bottom and the two and a half frame on the top. I'm extruding this middle piece, which would subtract that two and a half inches twice or just subtract five. So it's going to extrude up 82 minus five, which is 77 inches. And then hit OK. Next, let's add a shell to this new frame. So we'll select our shell tool. Select the top and the bottom so that it shells it out from both sides. And let's type in 7 over 64 and hit OK. And it looks like I forgot to select new component when I did this extrusion. So if we go back to edit that extrusion, you'll notice that I now cannot select a new component. I can either change it to a join or a new body. And so you can only select new component whenever you first extrude something. You can't actually go back in time and do it. So I've got two options. The first option is to hit undo and undo this shell and then the extrusion and then re-extrude it. But we actually have a separate option. What I can do is I can find that body that I made, right click on it, and go to create components from bodies. And so now it is a new component. Let's go ahead and change that name to front height. And so now we need to add some features to this. Let's go ahead and turn our bodies back on from our left base. And so what features do we need to add? Let's go ahead and start with these two bolts down here. Now it's very convenient where we put those bolt holes on the original left base because that sketch still exists. And so if we go through here and we find that sketch with those holes, we can actually find it in our sketches. You can see when I select this one, you can see sketch three opens up. I'm going to go ahead and tell that to be visible. And so now that sketch is visible to me. I'm going to go ahead and reuse it. Let's go to extrude and I want to select those circles, but I can't actually grab them. And so to be able to select them, we've talked about this before. Let's go over here to our selection feature and change our filter to not select everything. I want it to only select sketch profiles for this extrusion. And so now if I come over here, I can't actually select these faces like I could before. I can only select the sketch profiles that are available to me. And so I'm going to select those two circles and extrude out. And I'm going to change it from one side to symmetric so that it goes both ways and hit OK. And so now you can see I have a hole that goes all the way through our shape over here.
Let's keep going with our bolts. Let's go ahead and add these two bolts on the top of our height. But if you notice, they're not actually going through the side up here at the top. It looks like they're going through the front. And so let's go ahead and start a sketch on the front of this. Move up to the top and let's draw those two circles. And you might recall that these two circles had a 10 millimeter diameter. So I'll type in 10 mm and hit enter and I'll do it again. Circle 10 mm. And let's tell these two to be vertical with each other. Right click OK and let's put a point down along the top edge as well, right at the center. Right click OK, grab our horizontal vertical constraint again, and let's tell it to be horizontal or vertical, I'm sorry, with our center point up here as well. And then I believe we used a dimension before of 1.5 from the top and then five inches between these two circles the last time we made these holes down here at the bottom. And so let's go ahead and finish the sketch and let's extrude these two circles and hit okay. And then next, let's go ahead and make these circles for our J hooks. And so let's go to the same face, start a new sketch, go up towards the top and let's draw a circle and this circle had a dimension of one inch we discovered in our first video. If we look back at that J hook that we found online, you can see it gives me a diameter of one inch for this to insert into. And then once again, I do want this to be centered. So I'm going to select my horizontal vertical constraint, select this center circle and this center circle so that they always line up. And then the question is, is how far down do I want this circle to go? And so if we look here, it doesn't really give us that dimension, but it does look like it's a similar length from this piece to the top as from this piece to this hole, maybe just a little bit bigger. Let's, let's just keep it simple. Let's tell it to be five inches from this hole right here. And let's finish our sketch and extrude this all the way through. And let's run a rectangular pattern. Make sure you have features selected. And select this last feature. And then for an axis, we're going to go down one of these filleted edges. And then how many do we want? Well, let's check our picture. If we count real quick, it looks like there is, let's move it up just a little bit. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27. And so let's tell it to go 27. Let's make sure we have spacing selected. And the distance between them, I believe we chose two inches in the first video. So we'll do that again. And let's see how it looks. And that actually looks really good. If we compare that to our image, that looks about right and hit okay. And that looks like it's about all of the details that we need on one of these height components. So let's recreate it three more times. And so to do this, let's go to move copy. Make sure you have components selected and let's select this feature and make sure you select create copy and drag it over. And so how far over are we going to go? Well, it looks like it's somewhere between 45 and 46. If you look, and if you think about it, that makes sense because the distance from the inside to the inside is 43 and the width of this is two and a half. So it would be 43 plus 2.5. Or if you think about it, 45.5 inches. Hit enter. And we now have a second front height component over here. And so that's one way you can create a second piece. We learned the other way in the past, like using the mirror. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and use a mirror for the back two, just so we can compare the two. And so let me to do my mirror, let me turn off my front height on the left. And let's 
create a midplane. And I want this midplane to be between my two pegs. And so if I select both of these inside edges of these two pegs and hit OK, I can then turn my front height back on. And I'm going to go to Create, Mirror. I'm going to make sure Components is selected, not Bodies. I'm going to select my front height on both sides. And I'm going to mirror them across this plane. I'm not mirroring them across the origin because the origin isn't perfectly centered between these two, which is why we had to create this new plane and hit OK. Now, you'll notice something weird happened. On the move copy we did, it just recreated the front height. It didn't change the name. It just said 1, 2. But on the mirror, it said front height mirror 1 and 2. And so the difference between a move copy and a mirror is in the move copy, it copies it and everything I do to this from now on will be done to the other one. So for example, if I change the name of front height to boogers, it'll change this to boogers as well. And anything I do to the first one will be done to the second. Let's go ahead and undo that. But if I change anything of the back pieces, and I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this to back height. It is completely independent from the mirrored component that we used. You'll notice that the back two are connected and the front two are connected, but they are independent of each other. So hopefully that was helpful. The last thing I want to do is turn this mirror plane off. So let's go into our constructions and turn that plane one off. And then let's make sure we save our progress and hit OK. And we are done with this video.